Okay. We are live. I can never tell what the delay is between what I see on my screens and then what actually shows up on YouTube. Uh, so sometimes if I'm just standing there for a minute or two, just because I don't know the delay between the two. Anyway, here we go. Part two. I'm very excited. The build is moving forward. I have made... Let me stand over here so I can actually look at the screen. Um, from the Western Red Cedar boards, uh, I made all of the stringers. These are right now 12 foot pieces. Um, two of them that are gonna be the gunwales uh, are one and three quarter inches high by the three quarters thick. And then the others that are going to be the chines and the keel are at uh, three quarters by, um, sorry, an inch by three quarters. Give me one second. <clears throat> so, uh, all right. So what I'm going to be doing today is uh, I'm going to be... I'm going to be um, joining the pieces because what I have is I need to get to 18 feet and my pieces are 12 feet long. So I have 12 feet plus another piece. Uh, in this case, I'm going to try, I, I went all the way to 20, so it's 12 feet plus 8 feet. And because of the scarfing, uh, it is recommended that you do at least uh, 1 to 6. Uh, slope so by doing that in the ones that are just one inch I'm losing six inches but in the one that um, is almost two inches I'm losing almost a foot so I'm glad I made calculations in the beginning I almost got it wrong and I would have cut the, the extra pieces a little too short in the scarfing process I would have lost two feet but anyway I cut them to size and today I'm going to be joining them together. In order to do that, uh, I need to use an epoxy mix. I'm going to be using uh, System 3. Let me see, is this? Yeah, there we go. System 3 um, epoxy as well as some wood flour to make it a little bit thicker. Let's see. So, gloves mask, uh, measuring amounts. So I'm ready to do some of the mixing. And then once I get the mixing ready, I'm just going to put it on there, try to put them together, staple them and see if it'll uh, hold that way. So, I guess at this point I'm just going to do the mixes. Oh, a couple of things that is exciting too. I received the fabric. That's also really exciting. This is uh, polyester, I think it's the 8 ounces grade. And I also received the pre-bent combing cockpit. This is going to take a bit of work to put together when it's ready, but that's really <laughs> far from now uh, down the line. I mean, I don't even have the stringers ready, so it's going to be a little while. All right. So let's get it. It's still working. Seems like it's still working. Like I said before, if you want to uh, say anything, please do in the chat and I'll be able to read it. It was actually pretty hard to get um, the scarfing angles down. And in order to do that I used a table saw and I 
rigged up um, something to be able to um, get the long planks, the long stringers through and cut them at the right angle so that uh, I get the bevel. Uh, we'll, I'll show you guys that in just a little bit when we move over there. I just don't want to touch the camera with all this stuff now. I just want to focus on getting the mix ready. I hope you can still hear me now that I put the mask on, but it should be alright. Okay, so let's see. We need two to one of the resin to the hardener. Uh, I have these uh, measuring cups here. There we go. Uh, they're really hard to read, so I actually made lines on them. So I think I'm going to go for yeah, a half an ounce of uh, resin and a quarter ounce of the hardener. I think that's what's going to be on the mix right now. And like I said, wood flour to make it thicker. But that's going to come later. The first thing you do is get that ready, then the flour to make it more of a putty, and then the putty goes in between the two pieces of wood. So that's the two to the one. So I'm at four over there, so I should go to two on the hardener. That pours fast. There we go. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing on the close-up. Because I had the camera set up so that when I work over there, it makes more sense. Disposable knives, I thought it would be good to help with this as well. Okay. Okay. So 
So I'm supposed to put a good coat on both edges. I think I might have to make more to go for all five stringers. So I'm going to need this as well as then the putty that's going to go in between all the stringers that take the neck to each other. I think I'm skipping a step to, I think I was supposed to put the stringers all next to each other and then measure and make marks on it so I could see if it's moving up and down on it. But I think what I'm going to do is just set them up and try to get them as level as possible as I put the putty on them. Hopefully when I put a staple through it, it'll hold it in place. I'm just really excited about this step because I'll finally have the full length stringers. Up until now it's just been a bunch of boards down in the basement and hopefully after this step I can really get going. Like I said, if you have any questions feel free to type into the dialogue box. It probably will take a minute to answer now just because I've got my hands full of epoxy but the gloves of course can come off and I can start typing a bit. <clears throat> okay so now I'm gonna get some epoxy on the other pieces. Let's see how I'm gonna do this. make it a little easier. By the way, the red seal is an absolute pleasure to work with. So easy to cut. And the boards look great. to make a second mixture for when I put the rest of the stuff on and uh, the wood filler because this is barely going to make it. Maybe I should put on some music. The only thing is I don't know if I'm listening to the radio while I'm live streaming 
Does that count as copyright infringement? I feel like technically it would. So I guess the way to do it would be just to get copyright free music playing in the background the entire time. That might get old very quick. This reminds me of uh, my dad's in construction and um, he's an architect and uh, all of my breaks in high school and in college I always worked with him and if you're in New York or anywhere near our classic rock station Q1043 was always playing while we were working on stuff so somehow I always associate classic rock with construction or anything that has to do with tools. Yeah, this is just barely going to make it, I think, for all of them. I'm not going to bother turning the camera, so sorry, the, big, the main camera, the big camera is going to be stuck on the strangers while I mix another batch over here. But I just, I have to move quick. Because there's only a certain amount of time that you can have this stuff in its current form. So I'm going to do again four. Four of the rest of the epoxy resin and two of the hardener, so that'll be the two to one. So it's actually interesting now two of my paddling buddies are thinking of doing a build themselves. I have another buddy also that he he's already done a couple. Uh, he has two pygmies, uh, a lorry that he did himself, and then a small rowboat. I can't remember the exact name, but Jim has done all sorts of crazy project. He's obviously has made paddles before, but several boats as well. The first time I met him was at a class, a uh, rescue and recovery class. Both him and his son were in pygmies. It was so cool to see both boats. He started with a smaller one. I think he started with a 16 footer and then he thought it wasn't long enough or maybe it was a 15. And then he made himself I believe his second one was a 17 footer, but great boat, great paddler. He surfs in it. <clears throat> great roller, always looking for waves. All right, so here I'm supposed to mix in this stuff until it starts looking like what was it? Some kind of food. I can't remember what it was, but like peanut butter. It's supposed to be a weird paste rather than, see it's, it's too liquid now. I know that I can't zoom in on it, but it still feels a little too liquid. enough for all five. 
Okay, that's starting to look a little more like peanut butter. Both in color and texture, it's kind of weird. This would be an absolute terrible prank. I'm sure it would be deadly, but it looks just like peanut butter. I think it's still too wet. And I hope I'm being loud enough, because now that I have the mask on, I can't tell if what I'm saying is loud enough. Not that it must be extremely exciting to see someone mix epoxy, but I guess that's what happens when I try to do this live. All of the steps that are usually skipped when you watch a TV show or something, we have to deal with here. Will the stars of the show go, oh yeah, and then just uh, Bob and I here did everything. Turns out an entire crew came in, redid the full house. All those dudes did, they showed up on the day that they were taping, lifted a piece of wood and said they did the entire job. Okay, this is looking a lot more like a paste that I think I'm supposed to look for. I think I'm going to add just a little more. Hope that's not too much. So I've been told, I was worried about making these joints that if being under a lot of stress they would uh, fail. And I was told that actually these joints are probably going to be stronger than the wood itself. That's an interesting thought. The joint between these two pieces might actually outlast any stress that's put on the stringers themselves. Okay, I think this is the right consistency. I'm going to give it a go. And hit my head on the pole. Let me see. Can that be seen there? Peanut butter greatness. All right. So here we go. This is really weird. It does feel like I'm playing with food. So another thing that I'm supposed to be very careful of is not to press it too tight. It's not about uh, getting the two pieces of wood as tight as possible. It's about getting it to the right position, clamping it down, and then letting the epoxy cure and create the bond between the two of them. It's pretty much going to be filler as if it's a part of the piece itself. If I get it too tight, it'll just squirt out the sides and it won't be as strong a bond between the two pieces. So you can see which one are the gun wheels. Those are the long ones where the incline is almost a foot long because of the six to one ratio of the incline. Okay, it looks like this is gonna be just enough. That's extremely exciting because I had no idea how much to make. I think that's going to cover it. It was the right amount 
of just regular epoxy mix to cover the two sides on their own. Oh, man, there I dropped it. And then that was just the right amount. Look at that. It's perfect to make the paste with the wood filling between the pieces. There we go. Okay, so now comes the fun part where I try to figure out how the heck to make these straight. We will see. At least the wood seems to be very forgiving, so even if I don't do it perfectly, I'm hoping that it has enough bend and will forgive my mistakes. All right, I'm putting this stuff down over here. And I gotta get going on this stuff. Yeah, I'll just use these gloves. Okay. So let's see, let's clamp down, we'll get a clamp as well, it's a staple gun, safety off, there we go. So you can see a whole bunch of the goop came out here the side. I'm really hoping that wasn't too much that came out. There seems to be a really big space here. I'm going to try to grab this goop and stick it in there. Pretty good there, I'd say. So I'm gonna try putting a staple in it so that it'll stay in place. There we go. Once again, I'm not going to tighten it too much. I'm just going to put it so that it hopefully stays in place and cures correctly. There we go. Hopefully that works. Okay. Here goes the second one. That seems to be pretty good there. Some of it is running out the sides. 
ね。This one is time for a staple. <laughs> Looks like it's in the right place. I'm hoping the mixture of the putty is good enough here. It doesn't seem like there's enough goop in there. I'm gonna see if I can grab some from the side. Maybe. Seems straight enough. Wrap it up and clamp it. I think what I'm going to do is, after it cures, if I see that there's just not enough stuff in there, I might just add some more later on. But I think for now, As long as it's in the right place, that it's not too tight, and that it cures correctly, I think I'll be happy with that. Let's see if it's good. It's looking pretty good there. better joint than the other one. That's looking a lot better. All right. Time for a staple. I'm hoping it's not too much. That will be a nice thing. Okay, second to last one. That's one of the one of the chimes. Ah, this one fits really well. The goop wants to come out, but it seems to be sitting really well. There we go. I don't know if these are in the shot anymore. 
they might be just outside the frame but I dare not touch any of the equipment while I finish up so sorry you'll just have to imagine that I'm doing exactly the same thing as I did with these guys here just right outside of the frame there's two more so I just did that now I'm gonna clamp it oh that's really silly I should have moved the laptop to point over here so you'd be able to see all of this instead of just the close-up but that's what happens when you stream something live there's no way you can keep track of everything that happens. At least this time it's actually streaming, unlike the last time I tried doing this. Okay, clamping. That feels pretty good. It looks good. You know what? I'm gonna use this plastic bag I have here and spin the camera. There we go. left. Let's get this last one done. Okay, that's sitting pretty well. Need to get the angle right. Seems good there. So it's time for a staple. I'm going to use the plastic bag. This time my hands are getting messy and I really don't want to get it through. That should keep it in place. Ah, that's really nice. Now to use this clamp. Oh, I need to wrap it first. There we go. Not too tight. Just straight. Seems to be straight. How's this one? This one seems to be straight. Seems to be straight. This is the only one that had a bit of a gap. I wonder how this one's going to come out. I might have to refill that hole a little bit later. But that's okay. That's the only one that has a little bit of a hole. That'll be alright. How's this one sitting? Seems to be straight. Okay! Whoa, it's almost done and oh, pulled it back. That seems to be good. All of them seem to be in the right place. Just make sure these guys are all tight. Oh, 
Okay. I think at this point, there's a good stopping point. All of the... I'll move the camera a little bit. So all the stringers are now close to 20 feet long. I'm gonna let these guys cure. Uh, I'm gonna let them cure for about two days. Definitely at least one. I'm gonna probably come tomorrow and just check out the ones that have a little bit of a gap when the epoxy starts to cure. I'm gonna see how that looks and make sure everything is still straight, and then give it an extra day or two. After that, I'm going to take the gunwales. Well, first, I'm going to cut everything to the exact 18 feet. Take the gunwales, uh, put them in a makeshift uh, bit of water. I'm going to soak them for a day and then try to warp them a bit uh, so that uh, that rocker, well, I mean, it's not that it's going to be the rocker that really is going to make a difference, but they need to be a little bit warped so that they don't only warp once they're in the frame because otherwise they'll be uh, pushing on the structure of the boat and try to uh, strain it out. So they need to be pre-warped before they, they get on there. But everything's looking pretty good right now. I'll check on it tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in and uh, Checking this out, I hope it wasn't too boring to watch uh, epoxy dry. Scarfing of the stringers for the skin on frame. See you next time.